For more than half a century now, we've had space agencies from around the world releasing images of space. From man's early trips to orbit and subsequently to the moon, probes like Voyager venturing to the farthest reaches of the solar system, telescopes like Hubble and James Webb looking deep into the known universe, rovers going to Mars, astronauts doing spacewalks outside the, I uh, the ISS, even doing school classes in zero gravity to help try and, in and inspire the next generation of scientists. It's truly awe-inspiring at times. But inevitably, some people will claim that it's just all faked by NASA to cover up lies such as humans never went to the moon, or satellites are just balloons, the space station doesn't exist, or the Earth is actually flat. But what prompts such claims about NASA faking everything? Apart from the obvious that they kind of have to claim that, otherwise their arguments would quickly fall to pieces. Now, it is true that space agencies edit their images, and they'll openly admit to that. But does that mean that they're fake? Every wedding I've ever photographed, all of the images have been edited in the likes of Photoshop. The wedding was still real, I'm not fabricating a fake wedding, I still need the photos in the first place to be able to edit them. So, just because a, a picture's been through Photoshop doesn't mean it's fabricated. There are a few areas of claims for NASA photoshopping images, which I've broken up into these sections here. Now, a few years ago, there was an interview with one of NASA's visual artists who was talking about some of the images, and they stated, I can't remember the exact wording, but it was something like, yes, the images were photoshopped, but they have to be. Which conspiracy theorists have obviously taken as a, a cherry-picked piece of information and ran with it completely out of context. I've looked at these images over and over again, trying to sort of get the essence of it. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. Now, in order to understand the context that that was being talked about, we have to understand how NASA are capturing their images in the first place. Now, the world that we see is made up of purely visible light. And visible light is just part of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's the only part of the spectrum that humans can see, hence visible light. But just because we can't see parts of the spectrum doesn't mean they're not there. Some animals, such as bats and mosquitoes, can see down into infrared light, and insects can see up into ultraviolet. So the world to them looks very different compared to us. Now, a digital camera sensor can actually detect a wider range of the spectrum, such as it can pick up infrared light. But that would then make every image that we ever take look weird to us because we're not used to seeing infrared light. So camera manufacturers normally place a filter over the sensor which blocks out infrared light from ever reaching the sensor in the first place. But then astrophotographers, for example, who are photographing objects in deep space, will remove those filters because they want to be able to capture part, further parts of the infrared spectrum. And these are referred to as often full spectrum cameras. And telescopes are exactly the same. They want to be able to capture as much of the spectrum as possible. Now, a digital sensor also just sees light. It's not able to distinguish the various wavelengths, so it can't determine colors specifically from the sensor, meaning a normal plane sensor is actually monochromatic. But, you know, humans much prefer very colorful images. So cameras are fitted with a color filter array, which filters out the light for each pixel into either being red, green, or blue. Now, this is convenient for creating a full color image instantly, but it has the downfall of reducing the amount of overall light that is being captured, as well as the amount of detail. Now, since space telescopes aren't in a rush when it comes to taking images, they can afford to have a changing filter array in front of a sensor. So they could capture a completely monochromatic image for all the detail, then put a blue filter in front of it to capture all of the blue light, then repeat it again for the red and the green, and infrared, they can have filters that can pick up specific band wavelengths across the spectrum. Now, each image by itself would look quite bizarre to us, but they can then be blended together in photo editing later to create a complete image that looks more like what we're used to seeing. Now, I realise to some people that might sound very far-fetched of an idea, but many seasoned astrophotographers do the same thing here on Earth with astro cameras and telescopes. It doesn't mean that their images are fake, it just allows them to capture far more detail, but in doing so it requires multiple images to then be blended together afterwards. 
it can be a similar story with satellites photographing Earth, which then becomes another point of contention with conspiracy theorists, the blue marble photos, which are photos published that show a large section of the Earth. Now, this was first coined after Apollo 17 managed to capture a photograph of the Earth in full sunlight from about 18,000 miles away. There were many other photos of Earth on previous Apollo missions, but I think Apollo 17 was the first to get a full Earth, if you will. Now, since then, NASA have published numerous other blue marble photos over the years, but these can often vary quite drastically in their appearance. Not just in the colours, which can be quite apparent, but also in the proportions, which has led some people to call them fake. For example, if we look at the blue marble from 2000 compared to 2012, both view around the Gulf of Mexico. Yet while the Earths themselves are the same size in the images, the land masses look drastically different in size. This, however, is nothing more than perspective shift caused by the different viewing distances. The Blue Marble 2000 photo was shot by the GOES satellite, which sit in high Earth orbit about 22,000 miles away. But from that distance, getting detail on the surface is very difficult. In more recent years, what NASA have started doing in order to see more detail of the surface is to use satellites that are in low Earth orbit, only a few hundred miles high. Substantially closer than the GOES satellites, which allows for far more detail to be captured, but being that close limits how much of the surface you can see in a single frame. The 2012 image was captured using the SNPP satellite, which orbits the Earth end-to-end -end at an altitude of about 500 miles. So, it can't see much of a 7,000 mile wide globe. Now, this can easily be demonstrated using a model globe. Now this is 30 centimeters in diameter. If we scale this up to the size of the Earth, then a high altitude satellite 22,000 miles away is the equivalent of about 84 centimeters away, which looks like this. Whereas the SNPP at 500 miles is equal to only 1.9 centimeters, which looks like this. As you can see, when both are over the Gulf of Mexico, even though the Earth appears the same size in diameter in the photo, the apparent sizes of the landmass are radically different. So, in order to create a full view of the Earth from low Earth orbit, it has to create long scans over each orbit while the Earth's spinning underneath it. So, each orbit reveals a different part of the Earth. These then all have to be stitched together to create one large canvas, which can then be modelled onto a spherical shape in order to create the appearance of the Earth. Google Street View works on pretty much the same principle. It uses a string of images looking all in different directions that are then stitched together into a flat 360 panorama, but then the Street View viewer that we all look at simply takes that image and projects it like we're inside the middle of a sphere and we don't call Google Street View fake. Now, many flat earthers have questioned why, with all these modern satellites, do we not have a live video feed streaming of the Earth rotating? Well, because obviously it's all a lie and the Earth isn't actually rotating, right? Well, actually, there are a few factors to consider. Firstly, for starters, satellites aren't kitted out for streaming video. But while satellites aren't fitted with a video camera that can take an actual 24 frames a second real-time video, they are able to take regular images that can be combined together. Galileo did it in 1990 as it was flying away from the Earth. The Discover satellites are currently sitting at the L1 orbit point that are taking 20 plus images per day all of which can be put together in a frame-by-frame -frame sequence. Some people accuse it of being CGI, but, you know, most people know it as a time-lapse video. Even if they had a way to create a satellite that was geared for live streaming video, it would be boring as hell to watch. The Earth turns once in 24 hours. Now, to give you a sneak peek of what that would look like, Are you bored yet? Now, while those are sort of understandable reasons for combining multiple images and aren't really considered fake, 
There are claims that the likes of the Apollo photos have been photoshopped with multiple images, so let's take a look at those. First marker that people call out pertaining to the images being photoshopped is if you download some of the images from websites such as uh, the Apollo Surface Journal, and you look at the properties of the image file, they state they've been processed in Photoshop CS3 in 2009. So they've all been photoshopped, right? Well, as I mentioned before, images can be processed through Photoshop without ever really changing in appearance. The moon landings, bearing in mind, took place between 1969 to 1972. Back then, Photoshop wasn't even an idea, and digital sensors were in their infancy, only being very, very low resolutions. So all of the Apollo photographs were shot on film. Since then, the world has transitioned to everything being digital, and we only ever really view images now as digital files. So all of the Apollo photos were converted into digital images. Now, you can do this yourself by taking a developed photo and putting it into a, an office scanner. But doing that will pick up all the imperfections and the details of the photo paper as well. So instead, NASA had the original film slides scanned, all of which you can view on a website called March to the Moon. Now, they show not just the exposed portions of the film, but the entire piece of film, right up to the perforations on the edges. And you can go through the entire roll of every magazine and download every single image. And you'll note that each of the downloads are available in five versions, either thumbnail, small, medium, and large, which are all in PNG format, and then a raw download, which is an uncompressed TIFF file. And each one is over a gig in file size, with a resolution of over 200 megapixels. Those are the original digital scans, but a file like that is what would be called not particularly website friendly. Web designers want images that are small in file size that their websites can then load up very quickly. They often aren't bothered about ultra high resolutions because most people are viewing their websites on a screen that's only two or three megapixels. So images will often be shrunk down in resolution and changed to a high compression format such as JPEG in order to keep the file sizes as small as possible, which is usually done in photo editing software such as Photoshop. This then leads us to the next point that I've seen people raise as evidence of photoshopping in the Apollo photos, which is if you take some of those images, they find what they claim to be evidence of photo manipulation. Now, their examination usually involves downloading one of these images off the internet and then either increasing the brightness in photo editing or uploading the photo to a website that can measure various aspects of an image and looking at things like the noise patterns. It makes it look like the objects have been essentially just cut and pasted into the image. And I can understand why someone would draw that conclusion seeing such a result. However, it is crucial to note that is that those uh, experiments are only ever being done with JPEG files that people are downloading off random websites. They aren't being done with the raw or the low compression files like the film scans from March to the Moon. Just comparing the look of this photo that's being analysed versus one of the original scans, it's clearly been edited. It, it's The contrast levels are very different, the colour saturation levels are massively reduced as well. If you do the same experiments with those files, you don't get the same results. The results that they're actually seeing, this interference, the noise patterns, isn't being caused by cutting and pasting composition photos. It's actually being caused by JPEG compression. The original scans and even the, the low compression PNGs don't show any evidence of this photo manipulation because they're not being highly compressed. What they do show, though, is lighting and shadows that are physically impossible to replicate on Earth, which I would say is pretty irrefutable proof that the moon landings happened. But then if the moon landings took place, then building a space station or satellites isn't really that big of a challenge, and the big blue marble that appears in all the Apollo photos kind of destroys the flat Earth argument. Anyway, that is going to conclude this video. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. While you're down there, if you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe button, and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.